it's it's part of something that I really feel is my last assignment, as it were, um, as I come down the home stretch here. And that is to, as I said in my, my narrative, to, to share the stories from that period that I was most uh, formed by so that, that those stories aren't lost. By the late 80s, early 90s, everybody in the gay community uh, everywhere uh, had lost friends, and loved ones, and lovers. My name is Kevin Dale McKeown, and I'm 71 years old. To help you pronounce that, as one of my nephews would say, there's a yo in McKeown, dude. I am from Irish bogs and Ontario and Saskatchewan farms, and from the South Vancouver of the then nascent Indo-Canadian community where I was born. I am from the lonely islands of the Northwest coast, and from adventures in the slums of Calcutta, in the Caribou, in Montreal, and in my beloved West End. The knowledge that my first sexual experiences were criminal, and several years as the only publicly published voice of Vancouver's emerging gay community. I am from decades of writing about and promoting the arts. My greatest joy has always been listening to other people's stories and sharing them with my readers and listeners. I am from the 70s, the longest decade, beginning in 1967 with the Summer of Love and crashing to a close in 1982 when we put a name to AIDS. That was my formative decade and those are my stories. By some fluke of nature and nurture, and possessed of the immense privilege of being a large, white, and rather patriarchal looking guy, I have seldom felt unsafe in any circumstance. The stories of others not so privileged have often been the ones I was most keen to share. I find comfort in the company of old friends, sitting around rehashing old gossip, and when we pause, for fear that we're boring everyone, hearing a much younger person say, please go on, these are amazing stories. The clubs and bars had sent their revelers home for the night, but those who were too stoned to sleep or had no place to sleep joined others of the Demi Monde to compare notes about the tricks, the drugs, the ripoffs, and the assorted scandals of the preceding evening. It was my job, at $20 a week, to write it all down for my Georgia Strait column, QQ Writes, page 69. The drag shows, the gay liberation front meetings, the boycotts and the hair pullings, the late nights at the after hours booze cans and assorted steam rooms and the early mornings at the White Lounge. The Georgia Strait was Vancouver's hippie powered underground newspaper and our stories fit right in. I have a memory that reminds me that though in some ways frivolous, my early work had value. After my farewell swan song column in the Georgia Strait, drag diva Sandy St. Peters wrote to me, expressing sadness that my run was coming to an end. Your column, Sandy said, was the first time we ever read about ourselves where we weren't being put down or made fun of. I am from learning, understanding, and telling what I understand to be the truth about what I have learned so far. I'm definitely from a place of wanting to seize every opportunity to share the stories I know in this, I hope I am working from a place of understanding. Understanding that memory is a fickle thing. Understanding that my conclusions about the events I relate won't be everyone else's conclusions. Understanding that what others may feel, think, and do in response to these stories is their story, not mine. I also hope that those stories may help them see my decade more clearly through the eyes of the people who lived it. I am from a lifetime of listening to and telling stories. Let me tell you a story, just ask me.